Do not worry. Well, howdy, everybody, and welcome to episode 11 of Do Not Worry. I'm your host, Anthony, coming to you once again from the heart of Beirut and Jayatewe. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, all your engagement, hashtag engagement, has been extremely, extremely helpful. Subscribe to the channel. We're trying to reach 2,000 subscribers. Become a Do Not Warrior. We're almost there. We're almost at the finish line. Let's do it. We have a pretty crazy episode today. We're going to be talking about a couple of interesting topics. First and foremost, I'm going to be answering the question, am I a bully? I know it's hard to believe that I would get accused of such a thing, but some people have dared to float that idea. We're going to be answering another question. Who the fuck is Rena Rendur and why the fuck is she going after Rassan Sarkis, coach Rassan Sarkis, a local legend, a local hero? We're going to talk about that. Uh, we're also going to be talking about, I'm going to be giving you guys some Netflix recommendations at the end and... I'm finally going to be doing the ultimate Lebanese beauty influencer thing. I'm going to be talking about my hair care routine for this new blonde platinum hair. We got those things to cover. But before we get into anything, I'm going to try something different today. Um, since last week's episode, I talked a lot about sort of mental health and uh, my declining mental health. Uh, someone I know through Instagram called Richard John. Uh, his account is called Ruse Arts or Ruiz Arts. Um, I'm going to link everything in the description below, everything I talk about in the next few minutes. He has a pretty cool initiative that he's trying to get funded. He has a GoFundMe right now, and he's trying to raise money so that he can travel to Berlin from Beirut on motorcycle, basically, to raise awareness about mental health in Lebanon. So he needs your help. If you guys can donate or spare any amount of money, um, I'm going to have the link to his GoFundMe in the description below. I think it's a very cool initiative and it's a different way to sort of raise awareness. Something else I want to talk to you guys about. My friend and the artist for Do Not Worry, Luhay Daoust, has been working with his friend Serge Kaldani uh, on a card game called Medieval Encounters and they've launched a Kickstarter and they're looking to raise some funds for the game. There's a lot of different tiers that you guys can, can join with a lot of cool exclusive perks. Medieval Encounters is a dual card strategy game. It is a hero versus hero dual card game. Uh, the higher tier of pledge will get you a custom character. So yeah, if you pledge for the highest tier, uh, Luai will draw you basically as a character for the game. So here's an example. This is Serge, uh, Serge Caldani, the creator of the game, as a sword master. And here you'll see Luai as a blood cultist. Now Luai is a fucking awesome artist. If, you, if you're a fan of like the Do Not Worry art, trust me, you want Luai to create a custom drawing for you. Uh, and like check out the game's main art look how fucking badass that is look at how colorful that is I totally fucks with that I'm really excited about that card game you bet your asses I'm gonna pledge so Luai drew everything for the game uh, Nura Kabani uh, is the animator for the trailers and stuff and Serge Kaldani designed the game I'm gonna have all the links that you guys uh, want to check out at the bottom including their Instagram page the Kickstarter check it out support them these are local lebanese talents they're trying to create something badass something new especially if you live abroad and have access to dollars or have a way to, to pay dollars definitely give these guys a chance check out their game it looks fucking badass i know this is a long intro but there's another cool little piece of news that happened a local digital publication called trending talks me did a little write-up about the podcast the article is called do not worry beirut they're still good out there and uh, the article is written by kim uh, hishme uh, thank you so much for the blog post. Thank you so much for the kind words. I was very flattered. Uh, check them out. I'm going to have the link for the article in the uh, description below. So also check it out. Uh, all right, let's get the show on the road. All right, I rambled so much in that intro that I forgot to mention that Benjamin is still here. Benjamin, you want to say a, you know, a couple of words? Uh, hey, yeah, I'm so glad I can still be here. I thought I was only going to be around for one week, but looks like I'm a persistent little fucker, huh? <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's been good. Uh, well, I'm just, I'll just i let you get back to it. I don't want to really... All right, shut the fuck up, Benjamin. So I've gotten a few comments over the past like few weeks, and not that many. I'm not going to try to like blow this out of proportion, but a few people have sent me some DMs on Instagram, on Twitter, some comments on YouTube, accusing me, yours truly, little old Anthony, of being a bully. Me. Just because I'm calling out Tufiluk, I'm calling out people like Pierre Rabat, uh, and sometimes I do it in a maybe slightly over-the-top way. But I mean, it you know, gets me thinking, like, am I a bully? And, you know, I did my Dana Hurani video in the past. I made some Nimr parodies in the past. I went for Daddy Foodie when he plagiarized another video. So 
I generally always think I have a reason to go for these people. And by the way, I go for public figures, people with tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of followers on Instagram and on social media and whatever. Like when Tufilu goes after people, he goes after random people on Instagram with like 56 followers and he fucking shits on them in front of his hundreds of thousands of followers. When Pierre Rabat invites a guest on his show and like he and his co-hosts gang up on her and make her feel uncomfortable and make fun of her and shit like that, that is bullying. So I have no problem going after these fucking people. Honestly, I don't feel bad for any of them. And when I do feel bad or if I do feel like someone is using what I created in a slightly negative way, I try to reach out to, to those people. If I really feel like I fucked up, I'll reach out to them. Like, I'm not an idiot. But do I think I'm a bully? No. Am I saying all of this because I'm about to go crazy on Rina Rendur? Maybe. Maybe I'm just trying to protect myself and give you all a disclaimer. Am I a bully? I think no. I think I'm trying to be entertaining. I'm trying to call out these public figures who have put themselves in the public eye, man. Meet them. Who forced you to be to have hundreds of thousands of followers? You want to be a beauty blogger? You want to fucking bully people online? You want to bully people on MTV? That's your prerogative, my guy. But don't get upset if someone wants to call you out on it. And I'm allowed to call people bullies. And if you want to call me a bully, hey, you can unsubscribe from the channel. What can I do? I really think that I go for people who deserve it. I go for people with massive audiences who use their success and their audiences irresponsibly. They use their power irresponsibly. Those are the people that are in my crosshairs. You know what I mean? So, no, I don't think I'm a bully. I really don't. Okay, this next story kind of enraged me. And it happened a few days ago. And I mean, obviously, I was tempted to talk about it right away. But as you know, my podcast, I shoot it on Wednesdays. Episodes come out on Thursdays. So I decided to take my time. But we got to talk about this Rena Rendur lady. First of all, first of all, who the fuck is Rena Rendur? And why the fuck do I live in a world where I need to fucking find out who you are? You know what I mean? Like, that's what upsets me the most. I'm happy. Thank you for the content. I'm not going to lie. Thank you. As you know, the show, you people lack your tea. Y'all lack your drama. So thank you, Rena. But in a way, like, ugh. I'm so sick of having to dig through the garbage of Lebanese influencers to fucking dig up these rodents. And like I said, I'm going to be rough, by the way. I'm going to be, I'm going to be extreme. I might say some words that y'all don't like, but Rina Randur, fucking beauty expert, beauty blogger, and image consultant, and a fucking snake, uh, crossed some lines. She crossed some lines. So let me give you the quick rundown of what happened. There's a Lebanese comedian called Amunz. She lives in Dubai, uh, the way I, from what I, I, I understand. She was hanging out in Dubai with her friends and they were singing the uh, Shady Je T'aime, Shady Je T'adore. So she was doing that song, uh, but like a fun Mother's Day version of it, obviously aimed at Gibran Basile. Rina Rendur, you know, queen of the garbage content of Instagram, you know, wherever the fuck she was dug up from, was offended. So Steffi Sarkis, the daughter of Lebanese basketball coach, Leb legendary Lebanese basketball coach, Hassan Sarkis, defends Amunz on social media and shares like her post after Rina Rendur goes for her. Then Rina Rendur gets upset at Steffi uh, Sarkis and sends, sends her the following voice note. Now, keep in mind, coach Hassan Sarkis was recently hospitalized for COVID. He was, his health was in poor shape and thankfully he made it out he's doing fine he's getting better every day uh so just have that context and listen to what rena randur sent steffi sarkis let's put on them headphones y'alls are not gonna believe this <laughs> The venom coming out of her voice like a fucking snake. Shameful. هي قررت تكون بلا اخلاق وينعاد على امك وان شاء الله ما يطلع لها حدا مثل امونز في حياتها وات ا فاكن وات ا سوري نو اذر وورد فور انت شو بتشفق القلب انت وبيك وتربيه امك بتشفق القلب بيك اللي كان مقطوع عنده لجبران وبس قال ليه 
قلب عليه بتعرفي شو هو القليب اللي مثلكم آه ما بدي اقول الله يشفيه الله شفي اوه يو دون فاكت الله عنا مدرس يو دون فاكت اب ناو غنى احلى شيء عمله جبران انه قفر العالم مثل امثال بيك الوصوليه و شو بدي اقول لك يلا من هون بزيد عليك هلا جلبس اه فاكينج بيت سوري ناو ذات اي نو هو يو ار ايه اي نو هو يو ار عندك خمس دقائق تشيلي على البوست خمس دقائق تشيلي على البوست احسن ما تنسحبي على المعلومات اوه تنسحبي على المعلومات يو فاكينج امون سنيتش بدك تدعسوا للبلد مثل الكلب قاعد بدبي ممنوع تجي على هذا البلد بس انت هون فشيلي شيلي على البوست Oh my god, oh my god, the amount of disgust, the amount of, I'm sorry for the word, but the amount of country in that, in these messages, oh my god, fuck you, fuck you, you fucking dumpster human, you piece of trash, garbage fucking human, talking about a legendary Lebanese coach, a man who has fucking given so much to this fucking country, we're not even done with their fucking videos, but how fucking dare you disrespect coach Hassan Sarkis, now let me just share a couple of things about coach Hassan Sarkis, and why he means so much to me, and to so many other Lebanese people, when I was a fucking kid, you know how many days off from school we fucking got, because Hikmeh won Lebanese championships, they won the fucking Asia Cup, and represented all of Lebanon, and made us fucking proud, He is like the Lebanese Phil Jackson. There is no Lebanese coach in any Lebanese sport that comes close to Coach Hassan Sarkis' dominance in basketball. When I was a kid, I used to play NBA Live 99. You know what team I used to play as the most? I custom created a Hikmet team, Sejes team. I had a little, tiny little Bula Sushada running around, shooting threes. I had Muhammad Asha. I had Hassan and Dai. I had like the whole fucking team, Fadil Khatib, Shantaf. All the fucking dudes, that's what I used to play with under the tutelage of coach Hassan Sarkis, the legendary, the most dominant fucking coach. My dad, who doesn't even watch basketball, never really encouraged me to watch basketball when I was a kid. Like when I was speaking to him on the phone a few weeks ago and I was telling him about like coach Hassan not doing very well. I'm like, dude, this guy's a legend. He's like, yeah, he is a legend. Like, I hope that guy fucking comes out of this. My dad, who doesn't care about basketball, doesn't like basketball, knows how much of a legend coach Hassan Sarkis is. When I was a young kid, I also used to go train in basketball, in Nede Ghazir, where Hikmi used to train. And I used to see Coach Hassan Sarkis there on multiple occasions. I got to watch him do his thing. I got to watch him train players. I used to see players like Joe Vogel and Tony Medicine walking around. We used to talk to them. We used to play basketball with them. And Coach Hassan Sarkis used to be there. Lady, you have no fucking idea who you're disrespecting. Like, who the fuck are you? Who the fuck are you? What do you do? You just take fucking pictures of your fake ass fucking face and post them on the internet and you have the gall to fucking talk about Coach Hassan Sarkis. I'm not even, who gives a fuck about what political side he's on, what political side he was on? This is all fucking irrelevant. The guy just got out of the hospital for fucking COVID and you're being so fucking disrespectful. You nothing, you are nothing and I'm nothing. I'm no one, who the fuck am I? But you. And everything you stand for and the shitty, vain, shallow content you create for your dumbass fucking followers. And again, I'm going to go for your fucking followers again. Like, just like Tufi Luke's dumbass audience, your audience of whatever hundred thousand followers you have. Stupid, non-discerning, shitty, garbage fucking audiences. Fuck you. Let's watch the rest of the fucking video. So this was her response after Steffi shared her voice notes and embarrassed the shit out of her. She got on uh, Instagram and embarrassed herself even more. هاي افريوان اول شيء بدي اعيد كل الاميات ومن وين ما كانوا ومين ما كانوا وان شاء الله ما يح... الله ما بيحرم ولا حدا من هالشعور وشعور الامومه وان شاء الله ما حدا بيخسر حدا من من اهله امبارح افتر وات يو فاكينج سيد يا جيت ذا فاك اوت هير هو صوره الثوره اسمع امونز بعتقد يعني من اللي هن من الاشخاص اللي خلوا العالم تطلع you know من ورا قله اخلاقهم ومن ورا سلوكياتهم ومن ورا انه ما بيروحوا غير على الشخص ما بيعرفوا يحكوا مضمون ما بيعرفوا بيحكوا بفكره اي مضمون بس بالمسبات اللي بتشبههم وكل واحد بيحكي باخلاقه يعني أي أي. نزلت فيديو في just because you say something calmly doesn't make you less of a by the way, Rena, just because you said all the fucking shit you said in those voice notes in a calm, right, a man, doesn't mean fucking shit. 
Okay, what you said was fucking garbage, just like your personality, just like everything about you. So just, you're not fucking fooling anyone. What the fuck does that mean? With everything we're fucking going through in the country. With everything we're fucking going through in the country. Who gives a fuck? Who gives a shit? We have no money to buy fucking food. People don't have fucking jobs. Who gives a fuck? If Jibran Basil's mom got slightly offended, I'm fucking sorry. Who gives a shit? Hal Eddie, you're that fucking offended? I'm fucking looking at her as if I'm fucking talking to her. على المستوى اللي كنت عم تحكي فيه طبعا لا بتدخل لا بالشخص لا بشكله لا بشو حاطه على جسمها لا على السكشوال ايدنتيتي تبعها هي حره وحره تكون اللي بدها اياه بس بيقولوا تنتهي حريتك عند تبدا حريه الاخرين هي وانا مش دافع عن عن دافع عن كل ام عم ينهتك عرضها من وراء قله اخلاق ناس مثل هي اليوم بتطلع لي بنته لغسان سركيس بنته لغسان سركيس المدرب الله يشفيه ويرجعه لعائلته وان شاء الله بيرجع بيقوم من هالمحنه بخير بتطلع لي بنته اللي بتذكر بتذكر انه غسان سركيس يعني من المطبلين تبع القديمه لما السلطه كانت باوجه بس وقعت هيدي السلطه قلب عليها I fucking hate you. I hate all of your followers. Disgusting. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. كمان بالشخص أكيد وكمان هتك عرض. شو هتك عرض؟ بقلة اخلاق و وبقول لها شيلي لها البوست احسن بعد تشكي عليك لتشكي 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 هيدا مستواكم بس تتعلموا تحكوا بالمضمون بالافكار ساعتها بتنجح الثوره يو كاك يو فيميل كاك طبعا انا رح اتشكك عليك طبعا بالقضاء بدك تشكي بالقضاء وبتمنى القضاء اللي بمحل محلات نايم نايم عن الفساد نايم عن المحاسبه نايم عن هيك يكون معلي بركي بركي بيلتفت للقصص البسيطه والصغيره وبياخذ لنا حقنا August 4th blast uh, fuck it let's focus on Steffi Sarkis and her tweets اوريدي uh, ما ما فيها تجي على لبنان قد uh, ما موسخه uh, بس الثانيه uh, uh, سركيس رح اتشك عليك uh, اخر شيء بدي اقوله لانه عم يجيني مسجز انه شير ذا بروفايل بدي اقول العالم اللي مثلها بيكونوا مثلها بيكونوا اتنشن سيكرز يعني بيكونوا بدهم انشر ذير بروفايل لشوي ينشهروا فبحب اقول لها انه مش رح تطلعي على ظهري طبعا من كتر الفيك نيوز اللي بيعملون دعت انه قلت لها بدي اسحبك على الفرع المعلومات ومحيه المسج اللي قلت لها فيه رح اتشكى عليك طبعا انا مين انا لا اسحب على فرع المعلومات اللي بيسحب على فرع المعلومات بتشكى وبيسحبوها ف وان شاء الله يصير هيك لانه انا حتشكى يو فينيمس فينيمس سنيك يو ايفل سنيك لوكين كات لوكين Your weird ass pupils look like you've snorted a mountain of fucking cocaine. Allegedly, I'm, I can't say that for sure. I got no proof, but you look like you do a lot of cocaine. You're so evil. The way you talked about Hassan, the way the, the shit you said, knowing he just got out of the hospital, man, for COVID. And knowing who he is and what he's accomplished. And you are nothing. You're a nothing piece of shit. Disgusting. Defending Jibran Basil and the garbage politicians we have. Kissing ass. 
boot licking, licking the fucking government's fucking boots. Bro, Beirut fucking blew up. What are you talking about? Fake plastic. You're a fucking nobody. You're a piece of shit influencer dug up from the fucking garbage of Lebanese content, which there is a lot of fucking believe me. Hey, forget about the fucking politics. Forget about anything. There's common fucking human decency. When a guy was in the hospital for COVID-19, a guy his age, a guy who's my father's age, how fucking dare you be so fucking disrespectful? You piece of shit, useless content creator. As soon as you fucking pass away, you have no legacy. You are going to be fucking forgotten. No one is going to give a fuck that you existed. Unlike Coach Hassan Sarkis. I'd like to send my salutes to his kids, Ralph, Carl, and Steffi. I know uh, Ralph Sarkis. We've hung out a bunch of times. And, we, and like, I didn't even know he was Hassan Sarkis' son. Like, that's, they're a fucking humble family. If you know them, and I know Carl, I've met him, like I've spoken to him through, through Instagram. Like, they are fucking awesome people, man. And like, Ralph was a humble fucking guy. Coach, I'm so happy you're doing better. Um, courage, man. And sorry for being so disrespectful to that lady. Uh, you can call me a bully if you want in the comments, but fuck her. Well, hey, my cutie cues. Uh, it's time for the long awaited first annual Anthony hair care routine. Y'all have been asking me on social media for the past week. Anthony, what's your hair care routine been like? Ever since I dyed my hair last week, I have gotten so much advice from so many of you awesome people, mostly ladies. Thank you, ladies. And I need to call out three MVPs. I'd like to say a special thanks to Yasmin, Fida, and Jess. You three gave me like the most comprehensive list of items to buy and like uh, shit that I have to do for my hair and stuff. So thank you so much. Also like walking around the Shafi and seeing like all these tantit with their like dyed and bleached hair. I feel like a special kind of connection to them. Like I see a lady with, with dyed hair and I just go like, what's up? You know what I mean? Like it's real. We have a connection now. We look at each other, you know, like, yeah, your roots are getting a little out of control. You got to fix them, lady. Anyways, I just wanted to walk you guys through the products and uh, sort of uh, how I'm going to maintain this fucking weird shit I did to my hair. So the thing that everyone was recommending the most was a conditioner because bleaching your hair supposedly dries the shit out of your hair. And I mean, not supposedly, you touch it and it feels way drier. So I was recommended a good conditioner. And I was told that the Ultra Dew Olive Oil Conditioner was more than enough and it was a really good sort of a starter thing to try. So I got it and I've used it already once. Uh, smells really nice, made my hair feel nice and soft after the shower. So uh, that is the recommend first recommendation that I've gotten. The Ultra Dew Deep Moisturizer uh, Conditioner for Super Dry Hair, which is my case. And I'm also using like a mild, very natural shampoo. It's got a bunch of like natural oils in it and uh, like saw palmetto and shit like that. I was also recommended a Silva Shampoo. Now this Silva Shampoo, this is a Cosmolan Silva Shampoo. Now this I was told is uh, something that I need to start using after like two weeks of getting my hair dyed and I should probably use this like once a week. This will keep the hair from turning like a brassy color. It stops it from turning like uh, yellow or like orangey. So I should use this once a week and supposedly this like dries up the hair. So again, this highlights the importance of that conditioner. So the silver shampoo, this is something you need to get. This wasn't, this was like 20 thou. This wasn't very expensive. This was also 20 thou. So a lot of people mention like hair masks. I should do like one hair mask a week. Uh, the hair mask seemed like kind of a hassle, so, but I was also recommended this product. This is this I find the funniest. This is the Soft Wave Nine Benefits Oil Replacement Hijab Edition. So for this is like for women, Muslim women who wear hijabs. Now I'm not a Muslim woman. I'm not a woman. I'm not Muslim. But I figured it's time for me to connect with my inner Muslim woman. And this product was actually recommended. It, like again, it just it's deep moisturizer. Um, oil like replacement helps just keep the hair smooth, helps avoiding like um, split ends at the end of the hair. So this was recommended to me as well. I should do this like once a week. You can do it either before showering or after showering, stuff like that. Uh, haven't tried this yet and I haven't tried the silver shampoo yet because I just got these today. But anyway, so these are the three like essential parts supposedly. What do I use to style my hair now? These are products that I buy from the States. It's Teddy Boy. Basically, it's like a hair pom pomade. This is a pomade. This is a uh, matte one. I'm not using this now that I have like the blonde hair because this is a little bit extra dry. I've been using the slick version instead of the matte version. This has a bunch of like oils in there. So like the ingredients in this are beeswax, emulsifying wax, uh, castor oil, olive oil, coconut oil, vegetable glycerin, soy lecithin, whatever. 
peppermint oil, tea tree oil, eucalyptus oil, camphor oil, and vitamin E. So, I mean, this sounds pretty healthy and pretty good for the hair. So I've been using this to style my hair. That's basically it. I've been told to not wash my hair very often. So like two, three times a week, especially in the early stages. So I'm trying to do that, especially that like shampooing your hair and stuff dries it out and gets rid of all the oils. So yeah, do I regret dyeing my hair? Uh, not yet. Uh, I think when the roots start growing out and it might start looking weird. I might regret it eventually. I don't know, but so far it's still a good experience. But there is some maintenance. Like it's not just, at first when I did it, I was like, all right, I guess I'll just shampoo my hair normally. No, 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 no. It's a whole bunch of shit. You gotta buy some products. I've even been recommended coconut oil a bunch, but some people were like, you don't necessarily need the coconut oil. Um, and apparently it can be very expensive nowadays. So I don't have any coconut oil, but I'm gonna be using my hijab cream, baby. Oh yeah. Folks, as I mentioned last week, I might realistically be moving to the US. Both my parents actually just bought their tickets and they're leaving the country in mid-June. It is official. I'm still here for now. Um, gonna have to wait and see. But since I'm gonna be going to the States, I'm gonna have a new president, y'all. You know, my president, Joe Biden. Joe Biden! If you guys don't know, I'm a big Bernie Sanders supporter. I'm not a fan of the neoliberal wing of the Democratic Party. Uh, I think they don't do shit. You know what I mean? They're, they don't really accomplish anything. So Joe Biden was getting up, was boarding Air Force One earlier this week and tripped three times on the way up. Now, I know you're going to tell me, but Anthony, Bernie Sanders was also old. I know Bernie was old, but Bernie was like mentally kind of all there. Uh, Joe Biden is clearly showing signs of dementia, constantly makes mistakes, constantly makes gaffes, constantly you know, says the wrong word, uh, fucking like uh, mistakes people for someone else. He just called Kamala Harris president. Uh, he had that famous line where he's like, if you don't want to vote for me, vote for the other Biden. Like, what the fuck, dude? So, uh, anyways, the guy's barely functioning. Here's him trying to walk up the fucking stairs. And just keep in mind, he's, I think, 77, 78. This is like his first three fucking months as president. He's only going to get older. So it's going to get harder for him to walk up the fucking stairs. Ugh. All right, so let's watch the video real quick. You can see it's like he's calculating before getting on the stairs. Like his brain is like, must walk up the stairs. Oh, first fall. Oh. 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 This is sad to see. Like, I don't want to make fun of the guy. Like, is this an old man falling over? It's kind of like, you know, President on when he fell. Like, oh, I'm Joe Biden. I'm okay. Well, oh. oh. It's like limping away. Oh, God. I don't know, man. Like, I don't, want, I don't want to make fun of the guy. It was fucking sad to watch. And, like, sad and, like, kind of pathetic also. Because, like, he fucking insisted on being fucking president. Like, bro, you're old as shit. I don't get it with these old fucks. Other than Bernie Sanders. Again, Bernie has been fucking spent his life trying to lift the poor out of poverty. And trying to fucking save working Americans and stuff. Bernie should fucking... Bernie deserves a fucking break, man. Fucking Joe Biden, man. That's sad to watch, dude. He's only gonna get worse. This is honestly a big fucking sign of weakness. If he just, like, tripped or just fell once, like, bro, it looked like he was gonna break his fucking hip, man. And he can just can barely fucking string a sentence together and... Uh, it's rough. It's rough for President Joe! Joe Biden! Joe Biden! All right, and since it has been a while since I've done any Netflix recommendations, since I've given anyone any recommendations, so this one is for all six of you who really want my recommendations for TV and film. We're not going to do the Netflix top 10 because that is kind of useless, like it changes every day. I, I really can't tell you anything about these movies. But let me check, let me look at my Letterboxd and let me see what are the latest movies and limited series that I saw. So... I would recommend on Netflix, check out Pele. It's a like one hour and 20 minute documentary about Pele, the legendary football player. Uh, worth the watch. I gave it a three and a half stars out of five. Check it out. It's on Netflix. Raya and the Last Dragon. It is on Disney Plus. So I'm not sure how you can watch it in Lebanon. Maybe on demand. Like a, um, a friend of mine has a VPN. So I was able to see it on Disney Plus. Coming to America. Now, there's a sequel for it. Now, I had never seen the original Coming to America, starring Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall. It is on Netflix, so if you want to watch the first Coming to America, watch it on Netflix. I saw it like two weeks ago with a friend. Really enjoyed it. Really funny. I can see why it's a legendary comedy, so check out Coming to America. And then hop on Amazon Prime and watch the sequel. Now, it's not nearly as good, but I thought it was a fun enough comedy. It's a nice reunion. It was good to see some of these characters again. So Coming to America, the original on Netflix, if you haven't seen it. Watch the sequel on Amazon Prime. There is a like one hour and 20 minute documentary on Netflix called The College Admission Scandal. 
uh, Operation Varsity Blues, the college admissions scandal. Uh, it's pretty interesting. It's about how a bunch of rich families in the U.S. worked with this uh, advisor, college advisor, and how they would basically bribe their way into universities. They would like pay the universities a bunch of money to get their kids in those universities. So uh, there's a bunch of reenactments in it. It's very interesting. I quite enjoyed it. So it's definitely something to recommend. There's The Falcon and the Winter Soldier on Disney+. Plus. It is a brand new series. Uh, I've already reviewed the first episode. I'm going to put the link somewhere up here so you guys can watch it. Uh, and I'm going to be reviewing every episode as it comes out every week. So it would be very fun for you guys to join me on those reviews. I might have a guest, Danny, who was a guest with me on the Zack Snyder Justice League Cut, which is also my final recommendation for you guys. It's a four-hour behemoth of a comic book movie. So if you're into comic book films, uh, if you're into DC Comics, definitely check out the four-hour cut of Zack Snyder. So that is more than enough entertainment for you guys to go through uh, over the next few days. And that should keep you plenty busy. Uh, let me know if you've seen any of those things in the comments. What do you think about them? I uh, would love to hear your thoughts. All right, folks, and that is going to be it for episode 11 of Do Not Worry. Thank you so much for joining me once again. It is always a pleasure to have you guys here. Uh, please take a second to like this video, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel if you have not yet become a Do Not Warrior. Don't forget to check out uh, all these awesome things that I talked about at the beginning. Uh, Medieval Encounters, uh, Richard John's Instagram page, and his... Uh, GoFundMe to try to, you know, ride across Europe on his bike. Um, check out the article about Do Not Worry Online. I got all those links in the description below. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Twitter. All those links, again, are in the description. You can find me at Anthony Sargon. Thanks again for watching, guys. Really appreciate all the support. And as usual, do not worry.